Hello, hello, good evening, good evening, and welcome. So I was afraid that I was coming into the class a little bit late, but it seems that I, uh, I am not. And that is great news. So here we are again, ready to get started, ready to, um, to begin a new week. And I hope you guys had an amazing weekend and are also as ready as I am to get it done and to continue um, working on our English lessons tonight. Well, tonight we're going to be hearing from, from two of you from your um, explanations about the topics that, well, one of you has chosen and another one who has picked on their own. Apart from it, we're going to be talking about the news. We're going to do a little bit of research because I want to get to hear, you know, I want to get to hear basically all of you tonight. I want you all to read and to practice a little bit, but we're going to do it on your own and it's going to be part of an activity that you are going to develop. So we're going to um, talk about the news. And if we have the time, of course, we are going to be covering some adverbs that are used with um, the simple past and the past perfect. Those adverbs are, as we mentioned um, last time, used to modify the verb and they give it like a different meaning. So it's important that we know when and how to use them. So that's gonna be part of the class as well. And uh, yeah, I hope everything you know works properly and uh, we have the chance to, um, to develop the whole topic. So tonight, I, as far as I remember, we're going to hear um, from Claudia, I think, and uh, from Sandra. So we'll see if um, Claudia joins, you know, in a bit. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, I think we can start maybe by hearing from Sandra. And um, I, there was something that I wanted to mention, but I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the electricity thing so it's raining i don't know if where you guys live is also raining but it's um raining here it has been raining right now it kind of stopped but the thing is that as per usual you know i have to warn you if i get um disconnected i will try my best to be back with you as fast as possible because yeah it's you know it's it's winter and when it's winter there is a lot of like um outages and it's very very common to um to be pitch black so yeah it's something that may happen so just just so you guys are aware you know um just be ready for it if it happens hopefully not now uh so uh, sorry it was sandra what was the topic again i forgot i i just talked about the uh, proposal Oh yeah. Okay. So let's hear um your topic. Let's hear from you and what you have to share with us. Well, uh, El Salvador is renowned for its purpose in any area of the country. You can enjoy this recipe, recipe for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Uh, these are tra traditionally. Uh, filled with Morocco, cheese, beans, pork, ring, or a squash. Other popular areas decide to venture into the typical dish, creating varieties of proposals that become quite quick uh, challenge to know if you dare to try them. Such is the case of the pupusa of Ocote, anona, rock beef, avocado, pineapple, pork ribs, eh, shrimp, jalapeno pepper, chicken almond, and other ingredients that can be added to this, this dish. They are usually accompanied, accompanied with tomato sauces and candy. If we talk about the best pupusas in El Salvador, we have to talk about the pupuseria. And based only on the popularity uh, at the internet level and its attractive, we have Tipica Smargot, uh, Suiza's pupuseria, and Tencali pupuseria. 
and right. Amida. Okay, great. That's great. So uh, that was news for me as well. Um, last week I learned that people are starting to make pupusas from manona. That was that was news for me, and I think I will not dare to try that because it sounds like it's not it's not gonna taste well. I don't know. You know, I have heard about pupusas made out of chocolate. I have heard about pupusas made out of Nutella. Pupusas made out of uh, marshmallows. Basically everything. But anonas is like, uh, that's the next step, I think. Also the pineapple one. I mean, I have tried Hawaiian uh, pupusas. I mean, Hawaiian pizza. But I don't know about pupusas with pineapple. You know, it's I'm a classic. As I have always shared, I am open about sharing that. Uh, and I don't feel like, you know, we need to be creating all these flavors. But it's still, it's, you know, people want to... Oh yeah, you mentioned pupusas with jocote. That's that's also a weird one, you know. I don't know. That that's just out of this book, in my opinion. In the, in the case of jocote, I, uh -huh. I maybe try. Um, in the case of anona, my grandma approved the, the pupusas, but she said that it, uh, she didn't feel anything about the flavor. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Sure. Yeah. Well. I don't know. Maybe depending on what kind of hokote it is. If it's a sour hokote, maybe. But sweet hokotes, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's just like, you know, in my case, I'm just more about the typical loroco, frijoles, and, and, um, what you call it? And, and revueltas. It's like, that's, that's my thing, you know. I don't even do queso. It's like, I, I don't even do that because it, I feel like it's too simple. But, uh, yeah, still. So thank you very much. I do not have anything else to to add. You know, it's it's great information, of course. Always when we talk about pupusas, it's gonna be great information. But yeah, it's it's nice to know more about it. And uh, now we do. So, um, we do not have Claudia with us yet, but we will at some point, I expect. And we will have her share, you know, her part because I think she picked one of the topics that I had. Um, so yeah, but. Uh, I feel like, you know, this practice is giving us an, a, a great, you know, what experience, like having a speech or, or, um, practicing a speech is always going to be welcome, you know, as part of the skills that we have to create in an English class. And tonight we all are going to do a little bit of that. So please be ready, please. Um, because in, in a moment we are going to take a short break just to do a little bit of research so that we gather some information. Now it's only going to be reading, it's like gonna be a straight up reading um, because it will not necessarily have, you know, we don't really necessarily have time to memorize anything. Uh, but I hope that, you know, you guys are going to do great. You guys are, are great at this kind of thing. So yeah. Now, as I said before, hopefully you had an amazing weekend. I think we're if we have time afterwards, we may share a little bit of that. But right now we have to do this we need to finish this up we need to finish talking about things that are in the news and it's very important to highlight the fact that you know the news as well as any kind of business they need to well call people's attention in a way and if for example the news are not attractive of course people are going to walk away from it in my case for example i don't know if you guys are going to identify or not but in my case, I'm one of those people who I just don't know. I don't like to watch the news anymore. Not on TV, at least. I prefer to do news on Twitter. Like, I know that it's not, you know, accurate. Not, not all the time we're going to get, like, the, the right information coming without, um, like, a different intention. But I prefer to get my news from there because I feel like it's more natural. Or at least I get to... To read comments. I don't know if you guys are one of those as well. The one, the kind of people who like to read comments about the things that people are sharing. But in my case, I prefer to do that because I can see like I can have like a like a different perspective. But news on TV is like, I don't know. I'm way past that. When I was younger, when I was going to like high school, I used to be one of the guys who always knew what was happening in our country because I was always watching the news. Um, I was younger back then. And uh, of course, I, I used to believe more of the things that I saw on, on the news. But now it's like, I, I don't know. I prefer to have my own perspective and to 
just like, you know, have different sources for the same thing. So I prefer to search about what's happening instead of only believing what I see on, on one single channel. So, you know, that's, that's something now, but what they do and they do it pretty well on TV is that they exaggerate. And that's why we are analyzing these words and we're trying to define how to, um, how to like relate to them. Um, so yeah, I think we stopped at the word robbery. We're going to continue going backwards. We're going to do um, recession tonight. Yeah, I think it's recession, the one that followed. So I want to hear from you, of course. I want to hear what are your opinions or perspectives on this. And what is the idea that you have for the word recession? So coming uh, voluntarily, what do you guys think of the word recession? How would you define the word recession? Oh, okay. Hey there. <laughs> Recession. Mm -hmm. I understand that when a country or a lot of people or myself, myself, <clears throat> uh, we need to save money uh, by different uh, uh, exterior uh, politics for another countries in internal in our country we need to save money to 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 so we will need that money to in the future yeah we need to save money for each event that we we are living right now okay. that I understand that all right, great. Now, according to what I have heard or what I have read, uh, a period of time when the economy in a country is stopped. Great, that is a nice definition. And that is part of what I was going to say. I understand the recession is kind of a flop. When you talk about a flop, it's like a free fall, you know, like like uh, like a fail or um, yeah, like an accident sort of thing. So it's a flop on the proper function of economy in a country. It's like your economy is working properly, but then because maybe you increased some sort of interest or maybe you lowered some sort of interest or you got into a specific business that wasn't the right one. Um, and this happens more often with coins that are um, volatile. Volatile, in this case, we're referring to things that are not like set, you know, like, coins like the one we used to have, El Colón, which was like very volatile. And it used to depend on something that was like um, unstable. So our economy was very easy to get into this stage, into recession stage. Because a recession, as um, Ms. Garcia stated it, it's like a moment when the economy stops. And the problem with that is that basically the whole country is stopped and all money in the country is set at that value. But from that point on, it's like jobs are lost, property is sold at lower prices or maybe higher prices. And that creates a whole bunch of events that end, end up creating a crisis. And uh, yeah, recessions are like, um, come watch my call, like a reset, like a reset of the, of the economy in a country. So yeah. Now, how about rebellion? What about reward rebellion? What do you guys understand by rebellion? Or how would you define the word rebellion? Mire que dice en, ¿cómo se llama? En la Matrix, que es la rebelión de las máquinas. No, how about rebellion? Sí, uh, Lorena? Yes, I think that is like a, something violent that it goes overcome the government, and like uh, not to not to continue doing the the rules to break the rules the rules and 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 go like doing things that are not correct and but but it's the way that people use like to to person that yeah express yeah their their feelings or what happening okay great yeah that's nice that is a very good description because yeah rebellion is basically that you know a rebellion takes place when a group of people organize against someone who is in charge 
it's not necessarily only against the governments because for example in a in a workplace you can organize as as co-workers just to overthrow overthrowing is basically taking away power from so overthrowing um your boss and it's like you don't like what he's doing with you or where he's taking the company and uh, rebellions of course can take many ways because yeah, most of them too. yeah most of them are of course violent that's the, like the the most representative way in which we uh we picture a rebellion but simply by for example by not getting to work or by starting to get to work later like all together and because that this is why it's called an organization because you have to do it you know with the group um I remember the because of something or somebody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alguien está lista para la actividad que vamos a tener más tarde. Because we are going to do a lot of research. So nice. Uh, so a rebellion basically is that, you know, going against something or somebody. Uh, but yeah, the thing is that simply by all you, all of you guys getting to work late, all of you not going to work at all, you are in a rebellion. And of course, the most common way of seeing it is when you see crowds of people like, you know, filling up the streets and having like um, posts and stuff like saying, stop this, stop the crisis, stop anything that is going on uh, at a specific moment. Uh, but yeah, that would be a rebellion. So great. How about political crisis? This one is a tricky one. How would you guys understand or how would you guys define a political crisis? Um, what do you think, Carla? What do you think about a political crisis? Hi, teacher. Uh, it depends about what people think and what a political group they support. Um, everything depends if uh, how most people uh, support, uh, for example, nuevas ideas. Uh, in the first time, uh, everything one uh, that is um, that a uh, politic group because they think they are different and a lot of things. But uh, not everything is like a flower or like a sun. Mm -hmm. uh, we and and now we are learning and more about them and not are and not all are good people and and this is the moment when a political crisis uh, can be uh, happen. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, great. Yeah, that's a that's a great example. You were taking us the long road, but you got to the point. So nice. Um, and yeah, a political crisis normally happens when you know there are like misunderstandings between groups of of like people, and mostly when there is like a problem straight up having to do with the government. Because um, let's say that well, I don't know if you guys follow the news at all. I, we're talking about it, but I don't know if you guys do follow the news. Um, but the thing is that I think it's in Bolivia that they are living in a very tricky situation right now because um, some of the candidates for um, the government are being attacked by the people. And it's like, you know, people don't like them and uh, or they have things against them. So that is, of course, becoming a political crisis because um of course politics have to do with the people they are supposed to follow the people but if the people don't want them it's going to be a problem and whenever there are problems like those when you know people get violent up against their representatives it is the beginning of a political crisis um for example yes leslie um another example of this the elections in guatemala yesterday yes that's right was difficult. Hoy no Twitter. Al menos que no el que todos querían. Me levanté temprano a trabajar y no he visto noticias, pero ya voy a ver más tarde. Bueno. So, bueno, yeah. le adelanto, ganó. Okay. I was I was going to mention um yeah. what happens in Nicaragua because Nicaragua is, is like, you know, very often into into crises. It's like they have problems like almost all the time. So, yeah, it's like People don't like the government or some people don't like the government. So they try to do uprisings or rebellions. 
but still they fail and it's like a, a, a huge problem because uh people don't feel great or okay at least in their country so yeah now moving on into a less controversial thing natural disasters how about natural disasters what do we understand by natural disasters i think this is easy i don't think it's it's too hard to um you know to describe it how would you describe it um uh elizabeth Okay, I think we'll give it a wait on Elizabeth. How about um, Ms. Garcia? How would you describe a natural disaster? Uh, a situation where the nature uh, acts in a bad way, but uh, because of the consequences of the human being, I don't know. For example, uh, we can say uh, the results of air for earthquakes. Um, I don't know if it's if it called acid raining. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that's it. All right. So yeah, a, a natural disaster is of course when, as you said, there are problems on like nature happening. And many of them nowadays come as a result of, well, human um, mistreat, I would say, of modern nature. So, yeah, and natural disasters can take many forms like floods, uh, droughts, um, hurricanes. They can also be, Floods. yes? Floods, inundación. Inundación? Uh-huh. Floods. It's not floods, uh-huh. Floods, uh -huh. exactamente. Sí, floods y luego droughts, que son las sequías. Y están los uh, volcanic eruptions, uh, acid raining, as you said. Um, what else? Well, I think some people consider water poisoning as a natural disaster. I don't think water poisoning is, is a natural disaster because I, I take natural disasters more as things that cannot be controlled by human, maybe caused by human, but not controlled by humans. But water poisoning is something that can be controlled by us because, you know, it's like it happens. Um, water poisoning, it happens when people throw chemicals at rivers or lakes just to kill fish and so that they can catch the fish in a faster or more efficient way. So I feel like, you know, those are not necessarily natural, natural disasters that are human created disasters, in my opinion. But the thing is that, yeah, natural disasters are going to be the ones that fall into that realm, into things that are maybe caused by humans, but um, created on mother nature and are basically impossible to control. Now, kidnapping. How about this? This is a topic that is very tricky, uh, very touchy for some, but what do you think about kidnapping? How would you define kidnapping? Imelda, do you have a, a take on this? I beg you for I distract. It's okay. Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Um. How would you define or like explain an idea you may have about kidnapping? Kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Or. Uh, mm -hmm. Well. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, um. I'm you sorry. Know, you don't know what it is. No, no, oh, I'm okay. sorry, my mind is, is far away today. That's, a, that's okay, no worries, no worries, I get it. All right, how about... um? Me? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I read this? Uh, um, sequestro? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's a criminal act in which a person is... Possibly, and you're mm, mm -hmm. and or take a uh, I guess inter wheel yes. of thing where and the uh, invention to hold intent and captives for reason personal gain or the others 
malicious purpose. Is that oh, great? Yes, that is basically what kidnapping stands for. Because yeah, it's basically taking someone um unlawfully and willfully just to keep them with you and then um get some sort of um gain, as you said, some you know personal or economical gain. That's what um you know people do with kidnapping. Now, um in our news, it's not common to hear from this. It's like, you know, it's not like uh, like we hear from every kidnapping that takes place because our news are not about that. However, uh, when you watch like local news or more about like national news, but when you watch local news or when you read local news, um, you get like a closer uh, look at this sort of thing. Now, the thing is that Many news programs or news uh, channels like to use this sort of word because they feel like, uh, you know, like this is something um, that can become a scandal and that can become a trend. And uh, I don't think that's okay because, you know, using somebody's suffering just to make it more attractive or to make the program more attractive, I feel like it's bad. So, yeah, but kidnapping has to do with that sort of thing, you know, to like taking somebody away from their regular life and keeping them um, just to get some sort of personal or economical gain afterwards. Now, how about hijacking? Do you have an idea or a way in which you can define hijacking, um, Leslie? I think it's similar to kidnapping. <laughs> kind of, sort of. How would you define it? maybe like a criminal offense mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe this <laughs> <laughs> okay so hijacking uh, it's similar yes in a way it's similar but hijacking takes place with objects not with people Kidnapping is with people. Hijacking is with objects. Like, for example, if you take somebody's car without their permission, um, or more like this, if people are driving their car and you take it on the go, it's like like a like a Fast and Furious kind of thing. Um, you are hijacking the car. Or if, for example, um, you are on a plane. Las Gemelas. Yes. Yes, that is a very, not very good, but it's a clear example of hijacking. Estaba justo a punto de decir algo similar, por eso es que me, me causó gracia. Porque sí, o sea, if you are on a plane and people, you know, someone there has a plan of, uh, you know, uh, taking control of the plane, that will turn into hijack. So every time you are like in a vehicle and somebody takes it away from you while you're driving or using the vehicle that's hijacking so it's Could not hi mm -hmm. a, a bank too a bank i no. think and i no i think at the bank it will be an uh what you might call it is el um, es que se llama? i think it's more like a robbery like at a bank yeah it's more like a robbery but for hijacking um it's more for things, sí, para cosas como vehículos principalmente. So hijacking es para eso, like in a, in a train, a bus, um, a plane, which is the most common example, uh, a car or a um, helicopter. So all those things that, you know, you can get um, to control without this person um, knowing. Ahora, lo que les estaba diciendo antes, it's not hijacking if, for example, the car is parked and somebody, you know, gets in the car, turns it on and takes it away. That is robbery or car theft. Yeah, it's car theft. So that will be theft. It will not be um, a hijack. So a hijack happens when you are using the vehicle and someone takes it from you. So that's that's a hijack thing. All right. Um, how about famine? You, does any of you guys have ever heard about famine? Esa palabra puede que sea nueva. Like the people can 
Africa. Yeah. <laughs> in those places that doesn't want Hoy anything andamos, to eat. andamos algo oscuros, ¿verdad? <laughs> Los ejemplos. <laughs> Pero sí, es bien común. Eso es lo que, lo que pasa en África, a famine. Famine is uh, basically running out of food, not having food, anything water, to eat. Water, anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like when uh, you have like a drought, you know, when droughts happen, there's no water, there's no um, no food, and even for some time, there's a sorry, there's even no moist on the environment, so it's basically impossible to um to cultivate anything, and it's very hard for you to access food. So yeah, famines, as you place the example, Lorena, it's something that happens very often in Africa. People with their you know their uh, empty hands, not having anything to get to their mouth. So yeah. It's, it's a famine. Así que para los que uh, no sabían, a famine básicamente es como una hambruna. Sí, básicamente a eso se vendría, uh, se vendría eh, refiriendo. Ahora, epidemic. That's the last one. I wanted to leave that, that one for last because, you know, it's a little bit touchy. Um, so, yeah, epidemic. What do you guys understand by epidemic? Let's see. Um, Gabriela Cortez, what do you understand by an epidemic? Well, I feel like we're not getting an answer right now then. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, I think it's... Um, uh, A number of people affected by the disease. Mm -hmm. Yes, an epidemic uh, has to do with the spread of a disease and, uh, you know, how a huge or a big amount of people can get affected mm -hmm. by it. So, yeah, an epidemic has to do with that. Uh, it takes place normally when, for example, there is um, someone, someone that gets um, ill or sick from a specific um disease and then this person starts the spread of the of the whole thing however epidemics the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic is that an epidemic is supposed to be regional or um to like be focused on one place in a For pandemic example, here like a uh, dengue uh-huh that will or be zika. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. zika dengue or, you know, like regular coughs that we have. Because, for example, here, at least in, in where I live, uh, everybody has got the, you know, some kind of cold or cough in the last few days. In my family, the only two that have not had it are my sisters. But, for example, in um right now, like earlier today, my girlfriend told me that she's sick. And I'm like, okay, so we're not seeing one another in a while. Because, yeah, I <laughs> basically, I just recovered from it. I had uh, a cough last week. um So it's like, you know, it has been going around here. So it's like an epidemic um, around here in, in my colony. I think last Monday, it was that basically no one, I mean, as I think I have told you guys that I work in construction, sort of. So basically no one was working because many of us were sick that day. And um, it was weird because it was like it was vacation. You know, like you could see like all the shops and everyone just here, just sitting around. And it was very weird. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's something that has been going on. However, if this is spreads to like, what, the whole of Central America, that will start um, to be called a pandemic, not an epidemic anymore. Pero bueno, creo que la explicación de la actividad que vamos a hacer es así, les se las voy a hacer en español, porque quiero que todos entiendan bien, bien, bien lo que van a hacer ahorita, ¿sí? Um, y como les dije, quiero que todos participemos. Vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Quiero que piensen en um, su país favorito, digamos, o un país que a ustedes les llame la atención y traten de buscar una noticia que se les haga atractiva acerca de ese país, ¿sí? Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer básicamente va a ser lectura. A buscar una noticia, obviamente la noticia tiene que ser en inglés, así que ahorita mismo lo vamos a hacer, ¿sí? Busquemos la noticia y la que les, como les digo, la que les resulte más atractiva. Si no, si ustedes gustan también, pueden simplemente buscar en algún eh, sitio de noticias las noticias más 
frescas que haya, ¿verdad? Y vamos a leer, qué sé yo, un párrafo, dos párrafos acerca de esa noticia. Así que, um, con el title, sí, el title y la noticia. Tomémonos, um, creería yo que tres minutos es suficiente para hacer esto. Así que, let's go ahead and search for a news that is happening in your favorite country or if you want, you can do or pick at random. And uh, we're going to come back and read the news that are taking place right now. So you are going to be my source of news for tonight. So Leslie, if you want, you can go ahead and search the one about Guatemala. And I don't have to go into Twitter later because I'm tired. And so I can go <laughs> straight, straight I'm to great. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, if, uh, if you want, you know. But if not, you can pick any other place and any other um, sort of news. So uh yeah that's the activity so three minutes or two minutes and something is starting now we're gonna come back here in a bit i will get some water um so yeah i'll leave you guys to it and we're gonna start reading the news just in a bit Okay, so I think we are back at it again. Um, my three minutes are shorter than your three minutes, to be honest. The thing is, I just I just wanted some water. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Um, so the news. What sort of news are we gathering? I think we're gonna start by doing it um voluntarily. If I don't have any volunteers, of course, as per usual, we're gonna go one by one reading the news that we have gathered. So. Um, voluntarily, who would like to start reading your news? Can I? Sure. Okay. Um, anti-corruption cross center wins in Guatemala and review to establishment. So, Bernardo Arevalo, eh, celebrate an anti-corruption cross center one, run of election for Guatemala's presidents of Sunday. Handing Estonia rebuke to the conservative political establishment in Central America's most popular nations. Bernardo Arevalo, eh, a polyglot psychologic, is right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From eh, an observer party made up largely of urban professionals, took um, 58% to the vote, with 98% of votes counted on Sunday. The electoral authorities say, his opponent, Sandra Torres, a former first lady, got uh, 35%. That's it. Okay. So it was not that close. I thought it was going to be closer, but yeah, it was not that close. It was um, a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting it. So I, wow, 
that's that's a great news kind of shocking yeah. but yeah okay thank you thank you very much all right um anyone else who wants to do it voluntarily no volunteers okay so let's see um Luis in your case Luis what is the news that you have gathered Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the news by today, but I, I saw uh, it was a, a crash. I, I think a crash between one car and one motorcycle, but that was near to Sonsonate or on the on the highway. Yes, uh, in in direction to Sonsonate, mm -hmm. the 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 guy the 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 motorcycle is dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I think that this this is the the my point is that every day we have crash. I don't know why the ink uh, the ink increase incre increase increase that uh, event. So, but according to the to, to the news, the the crash here in, in El Salvador uh, have uh, more or less uh, like five hundred percent that that increase uh, uh, versus the, in the past, mm -hmm. but or, or or before to to the pandemia we live here, in, and the, but. The, the more people that have a Christ always is in, 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 in always is include uh, the motorcycles. The motorcycle. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I think that the, the people need to ride the motorcycle, but they don't have the enough uh, experience to, to ride that, that, that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And also they, uh, don't have the licensed driver and they they don't know the manual mm -hmm. to 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 drive here in in, in this country That's yeah it. it's 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 a tricky topic and and you know it's something that has happened a lot um even here i, I thought when you said a car and a motorcycle i thought you were gonna when you were gonna mention the accident that took place like what Three minutes away from my house. Um, t today, uh, like around four or, yeah, it was around four p.m. There was an accident. There was a motorcycle that was actually parked, uh, by the street, and a car ran over it. And the car ended up, you know, rolling over, and it was a whole mess, a whole um show. Um, as far as I know, nobody is necessarily dead, but you know, there was like a, like a big thing. It was it was a big thing that happened, and uh, I think it's a bit of both. You know, I think it's like you know, drivers. Um, some of us have the idea that motorcycles are tiny and we're not gonna get damaged if we get into an accident with them. So we feel braver when we're driving a car. Me, I drive both vehicles. I drive motorcycles and I also drive cars, and I try to be careful with either. You know, because it's like um it's dangerous it's simply dangerous to to be out there and just to feel like you are the owner of the road but what you mentioned is also very common it's a common topic that many people who drive motorcycles don't have a license don't have experience so you know it's something that can of course lead to an accident so yeah it's very sad but i hope that you know we can get educated by um by all this trauma that is taking place now how about we hear then from Sandra? Did you gather any news, Sandra? Or let's hear the news that you have gathered. Um, Sorry? Okay, then while we wait for Sandra, um, yes, Ms. Garcia. 
Okay. I'll there I will read about Hillary Drenches, Southern California, with record breaking rainfall as a storm wreaks havoc. The remand of tropical storm Hillary, a uh, category four hurricane, when it was turning in the Pacific before crossing a, a shore in Mexico, brought record breaking rainfall to the third Southern California flooding roads and causing mudslides and rock sides as it battled north. While Hillary was expected to dissipate Monday, forecasters warned rainfall from this. The storm could, could cause life-threatening flooding across the southwestern U.S. people as, I'm sorry, the southwestern U.S. people as far north in Idaho, Idaho, where Idaho, <laughs> where when the storm could cause flooding in the areas, um, I think. Oh well, Hillary was downgraded to a tropical storm pure to making landfall over Baja California, Mexico, Sunday before becoming a post-tropical cyclone early early Monday morning. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, yeah, and that has also been on the news that I have read. You know, it's it's a, it's a, something tough. Those places are normally dry. It's not like places that you know are used to getting storms. So of course, the land in those um cities is not ready for it, and the infrastructure is not ready for uh for like big big amounts of like rain. Uh, and that is why it is very possible that those places can be affected by floods and getting a lot of trouble so yeah but yeah it, it has been uh, on the news in the last few days so hopefully it doesn't go you know as far as they are um thinking right now and it stops before it gets any worse so yeah thank you very much for sharing then um how about we hear from you Lorena can you please share the news that you have gathered I was reading something about robots and there are ten the tops of ten robots, but we're going to read something about three. The first one is IBO, another another adorable robot though that was brought into existence by Sony. This robot was discontinued almost a, dec a decade ago. However, it has now come back with even more abilities for human operation. This mechanical pup reacts to words or phrase or scratches on the head, can learn tricks, and will seek out owners. One point mm -hmm. that cannot go unnoticed is that it has an application that owners can use to adjust system settings or add new tricks and can store memories by connecting to the internet cloud. Another that is important is the ocean. It's a viral aspect of, a, no, the one, the other one that was important was Adrian X is a building robot that is in charge of our old brick loading, shopping routine and installations. The robot created by Fast, Fast Bricks Robotics in Australia employs FBR's dynamic simulations, tech with a just to ambient variable, variables in real time, a lower precision robots in large scale outdoors task. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds that, 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 that. Yeah. Okay. That sounds <laughs> I would like to have a, a, a dog. Yeah. A dog. Yeah. And I, I, I be, oh. <laughs> you know, if you, if you like um, tell it to stop and like you can, uh, it's different from having an animal, you know, having <laughs> a, having a robot pet. Why not? Yeah. You no, but have... I, I I think that the, the best for for me would be uh the vacuum cleaner robot. That's oh, nice. Yeah, I have heard of that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah that is are... like a, a little plate. Uh huh, and, like a plate. And, yeah, and it is not cheaper, like eighty nine dollars. Yeah, they're and they're also very cute. I mean, I have seen you know the videos of the things like going around the house and cleaning and all. So yeah, yeah, I I need one of those. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, but yeah, the poppies are are good. The problem I think with them is, you know, how everything is monetized, and I feel like 
they, they sell it as you can learn new tricks, but I feel it's more like you can buy new tricks. I don't know. I yeah, yeah, like maybe. Yeah, yeah, you can maybe. buy new tricks <laughs> instead of you can it can learn new tricks. Yeah, um, yeah. But still, it will be a nice experience, I think. Um, now the only thing, I don't know. I can it, this can come from a cat lover, maybe. But the thing is that I haven't seen you know a robot of a cat yet. I feel it's because it's so difficult <laughs> to create the the, the 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 what the spirit of a cat. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah, gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be hard, you know, for for scientists to create the the spirit of a cat and to have um the abilities of a cat in a robot. I think it's gonna take some time because dogs are easier to like mimic and to like you know control in that sense. But yeah, that's nice. And also the one that you mentioned for construction, uh, yeah. sounds very interesting. And I feel it's one of those robots that are doing the 3D prints nowadays. It's like a common trend in housing in the U.S that they um they have robots to 3d print houses and instead of you know buying or paying tons of people to like build your house um you pay one company who is built who's going to build everything uh with a robot so it's you know it's something that has been going on in the u.s for a while but this is in australia you said right yeah oh okay australia. nice very nice well uh let's see how about in the case of uh carla what are the news that you have gathered Hi, teacher. Hey there. Well, I don't know if if the news have to be good or bad, it's but okay. I but I found one news. Uh, wait a minute, about um, uh, siblings that was shot by cops <laughs> in okay. New York, in New York City, mm -hmm. and the news is longer. Uh, but I I read some part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, just wait a minute. I have I looking for. Oh yes, um, the thirty four years old uh brother was shot in his left foot, while while his brother was shot in the back and shoulder. And it's currently in the ICU at Wednesday's Medical Center. Uh, one of these brothers said, "I'm in a lot of I'm in a lot of of pain, several pain. I'm mentally scary right now." And um, and the other say, "Almost didn't make it home. That I almost didn't make it home." That was scary for me, and I don't know. It is it's a bad news. I mean, but this is the the first <laughs> the first news that uh, appears in internet about New York. Mm -hmm. So that's the information that I, I that. found. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, police brutality in the U.S. is just so like so outrageous. I feel. Like, you know, people or police men or women, um, they feel so powerful. And I have seen so many of these situations or videos where, you know, they just feel like with the empowerment of doing whatever, just because they yes. feel like it. And, and in this case, uh, the two men was mm -hmm. black people and, you know, what, mm -hmm. how they uh, yeah. uh, are with these people. Yeah, it's it's very tough. It's tough to read, you know, things like those. Um, but yeah, it's like, for example, I don't know if you guys ever got exposed to that news of the guy who was like um strangled to death. You know, who who uh, a police was like, um, like putting his knee on this guy's throat, and he basically died with that or in that way. Um, that happened in Minnesota. That was the state where I used to live when I was living in the U.S. And um, I consider Minnesota to be one of the most specific and most stable states in the U.S. I would not say the same about California or New York, but when I heard that this happened in Minnesota, I couldn't believe it because I was like, I mean, I was there. I was at, at that road, actually, and I never saw anything like that. I never saw people behaving like that. But it's like since a time... For, from now or since some time until now, 
police in the U.S. has become this sort of like over empowered kind of thing. And it's very tough, you know, to live in a place where you cannot do as you will because of your color skin, I mean, because of the color of your skin. And it's very, very difficult. But still, those are the kind of things, you know, that some people have to put up with. But yeah, it's it's part of the world that we live in. Now, um, how about we hear from one more? I think we still have time for one more. Um, maybe we can get to hear from Elizabeth. Would you like to share the news that you have gathered? Hi. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. My <laughs> my news is fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, two American men were found inside the Eiffel Tower this Monday after spending the night there, as reported by the Monument Authorities to CNN. Two men who had taken for the famous Parisian Iron Tower on the Sunday night support group tapping their duty to their uh, Exactly the cold consumption <laughs> as no damage was found and the find the street passing in a historic on the cultural site was dismissed, adding the Paris precursor of it. Just that. <laughs> okay. So okay, that will be, you know, added <laughs> to the bucket list. You know, sleeping at the Paris Eiffel Tower. Just, just some people do some sort of things. That's and as you said, it is funny. It is funny because just thinking about that, you know, sleeping uh at a place like that. I don't know who can say that. You know, it's those two people now, because um, I don't know. Just why? <laughs> why would you do that? It's the only thing that comes to mind, at least in my case. Like, why would I um sleep at you know, at a place like that. Uh, but if I ever get to pick where to sleep, I think I would like to uh, sleep at um, maybe the Pyramid of Giza. You know, I think if I ever, you know, got to, to do something as crazy as that, I think I will pick the Pyramid of Giza. It sounds like a, like a cozy place to, to spend the night. But well, uh, now I would like to hear maybe, I think we still have time for one more. So let's see, Gabriela Cortez, in your case, can you please share the news that you have gathered? Yes. Okay. My guess is about the, the Spain. The Spain. Mm -hmm. Spain wins the first women's soccer war. Group after beating Egon. Spain won its first Women's World Cup on Sunday. Uh, thanks to a uh, first half goal by Olga Carmona. Mm -hmm. And another, uh, uh, for example, in, in the Olga Carmona, uh, she. I no sabía. Uh, the father. In the this the Sunday, the uh, uh, death. Mm -hmm. He passed. Yeah, he and passed. they didn't they didn't mm -hmm. tell her. Yeah, before the game, I that that was very sad. Horrible. Uh, that, yeah, that was very sad. I don't know. I don't know how I will react to something like that. You know, it's like, um, they didn't tell her because they assumed that if they did, she was not gonna play. She was not gonna be mentally prepared to play, and they needed her to play. Um, so it was like. The father had passed before the game. That's at least what some news report because he had passed before the game. Ah, I don't know. I don't know how I will I will react to something like that. You know, if it will be too tough. Sí, sería horrible la verdad que se o sea fallece el papá y luego la ponen a jugar y después gana el mundial y después le cuentan que el papá había muerto. That's that's very sad. That's terrible. Yeah, that's very very sad. But well. Um, the things that happen sometimes, you know, it's it's kind of fortune or misfortune in this case. But well, uh, before we go, I think that we're going to wait for Claudia for tomorrow. Así que mañana Claudia va a tener su chance. Um, ahora sí, let's see. We can pick uh, from these topics 
the people who cannot necessarily participate are going to be right now who Leslie, Lorena, um, Gabriela, and uh, Imelda, who is actually already gone, and Sandra. So the rest of you guys, do I have any volunteer? Me, teacher. Okay, you. And which would you like to pick one of these topics or would you like to pick your own? Yes, why school shouldn't give him homework. Okay, why schools shouldn't give homework. Okay, so what today we're only going to do one because we still have Claudia pending. So we're going to give her the chance, you know, for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, for the following classes, we're going to have, as per usual, more topics, more stuff. Tomorrow, we're also going to continue talking about the obverbs that we use when we have the simple past and the present perfect. Um, so those, oh wait, it was the past perfect. But the thing is that we're going to continue working on that tomorrow. Uh, for now, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation. Thank you for doing the research, you know, to share a little bit of the news that is going, ar uh, going on and around uh, the world. So have a great night and see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay.